It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I look privilege to interview the former Mexico national professional softball player, Cheyenne Tarango. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to play professional softball? Um, I started thinking about professional when I was in college um, and just playing at high level and people just thought that I could play. And so I continued with Team Mexico and that was kind of like my foot in the door and then kind of escalated from there. What was it like putting on the Lady Volunteers orange jersey and playing for Tennessee of Volunteers? Um, I love Tennessee. I loved my experience. Um, I wouldn't change it for the world. I've learned a lot um, throughout my four years in Knoxville. I think that I have learned what, how to react in different situations. Um, I'm grateful for every opportunity that they gave me. I wanted to go to the World Series. Um, and so being a Lady Vol, I got to go three out of my four years, which even now is crazy when I say it out loud because I know a lot of athletes that didn't go at all for it for their four years. And, um, they were just as good, if not way better than me. And they still just didn't get the opportunity to go. So I'm definitely grateful to, to call myself a lady ball. What was it like, obviously going three out of your four years to the college world series? Crazy. (laughs) Um, I didn't appreciate it as much my first two years, but once we didn't make it my junior year, um, I like to look back and, and it's, it's a crazy, crazy time. And you take it for granted. And I, I'm thankful that we didn't make it my junior year um, so that I can appreciate that much more. What was it like, obviously getting to put on that college world series ring once you won? We didn't win. We went to the finals. Um, Unfortunately, Oklahoma knocked us out. Um, Shout out to Lauren Chamberlain for hitting the home run, but um, yeah, no, uh, uh, getting to the finals was, oh man, it was definitely the biggest crowd that I've ever played for, um, the most anxiety that I've ever played with, <laughs> um, but it was so much fun. I, You feed off the crowd and um, our fans were amazing and we had our own little section uh, just for Lady Vols and they kept us hyped throughout the whole series and um, I appreciated them and and loved the moment and just appreciated the moment. Of course, what was it like coming out of the University of Tennessee, getting drafted into the MPF to the Cleveland Comets? I didn't go into the Cleveland Comets until um, a couple years after college. I played um, with Mexico from 2015 to 2019. Um, I believe Comets was 2000. 19. I think that was my last year. Um, but it definitely gave me, it was kind of like on my bucket list. I wanted to continue to play. Um, and I loved the opportunity to compete with the best of the best and, um, so stoked that I was able to do that because a lot of people are not able to say that they've played with, um, the best of the best and, and in the MPF. Of course, what was it like playing with Team Mexico and representing, of course, Mexico on your chest when you were playing? It's a whole different experience. It's um, a lot more pride. Um, as much I, I love Tennessee and I love the Lady Balls, but when you play for a country and when you play in that country, I played in Mexico a, a lot throughout my four years um, with Team Mexico and they just, 
it's just, I, I can't explain it as far as um, playing for your family. It's, uh, it's a whole nother dimension. And um, I'm grateful for the opportunity to, to play for my family and for my, my culture and, and to claim Team Mexico. What was it like playing in the World Cup of softball for Team Mexico? So much fun. <laughs> so much fun. I loved it. Um, when you compete against different countries, uh, you are exposed to different levels and um, different cultures and different ways of, of communicating and playing. And um, I thought it was so much fun. And I loved learning and playing against all these different people. Um, but it was also great to sit there and see the progression of how we were when I was there my first year in 2015 to my last year in 2019. I mean, shoot, we leaps and bounds better. And I think it just brought us together and it, it gave us a sense of pride of just to see how far we've come from in four years. And so I, I'm hoping that uh, Mexico continues to be a team to, to compete um, and to be on people's radar from here on out. What are some of your favorite memories and moments of obviously competing for Team Mexico? So many. Um, if you knew my teammates, you knew that we, every time we were together, we had an amazing time and had a blast and we're constantly laughing. Um, so I wouldn't say that one is better than the other. I mean, we went to Japan. I've been to, um, to Colombia. I've been to, um, we went, they went to Australia. Um, we've been all over the place and, and to Canada, like we've been everywhere. And so I think, um, in each place we've created our own memories and I wouldn't say one is better than the other. Of course, during your time, what was it like competing against Canada and obviously the United States? Canada and the United States are definitely teams to kind of that set the bar, right? Um, they've always been the top, top three, at least, um, top three or four. And so whenever we played Canada or USA, it was just balls to the wall. I mean, we had nothing to lose. We were always um, giving everything that we've got. Uh, when we ended up beating them in the Central Americans um, for the qualifiers and stuff, I, it was, it was a lot of fun and it just kind of proved to us that we belonged there um, and that we could do it and, and to have confidence in ourselves. And we were super excited from, from then on out that we were able to do that. Of course, during your time, did you ever go to the Olympics with team Mexico? I did not. No, unfortunately I retired before um, the Olympics, especially with 2020 and everything that was going on um I hung them up in 2019. What was it like obviously putting on that Cleveland Commoners jersey versus obviously putting on the Mexico jersey? Oh completely different um Comets was definitely our team was mixed it, there was some um team Mexico players and there was other players that were drafted as far as as well as traded um on that team we had different experiences on that team. Um, but like I said, the minute we put on that team Mexico uniform, it's, it was a sense of pride and, and playing for, um, our country and, and loved playing and doing that and participating that way. And it's just, it's more emotional that way. What are some of your, what were some of your game day routines and rituals like as a professional athlete? Ooh, um, Game day rituals. I'm trying to think of what I what I did. I mean, I had different things when I was up to bat that I always did. Um, the way that I grabbed the bat, um, my glove had a bunch of sayings on it, and I had a routine when I was on the mound. Um, I think it depended on what was going on. For instance, if I had been pitching really well or hitting really well and I was constantly, I had something to eat and it was the same meal every day. Um, 
for that tournament or that week or whatever it may have been. Or um, I always had to wear my hair the same way. I had to, in college, I had to wear my watch. I had to braid my hair. I had to make sure I had my earrings in. I always made sure that I had makeup on. <laughs> um, there's a lot of different things. I think as a softball or baseball player, the amount of superstition that goes on on those fields and behind the scenes is crazy, crazy. Who are some of the players that you looked up to, whether they were on your team or in other teams? Ooh, good question. Um, players that I looked up to. I definitely looked up to Kat Osterman um, when I was little. Um, a lot of people like Jenny Finch, but for some reason I really just connected with Kat. Um, I think there are definitely players that I played with that I very, that I admired, um, and I respected as far as their work ethic and the way that they carried themselves on the field. Um, like Maddie Shipman, for, for example, uh, she was my teammate, on on Tennessee and there are multiple times where I would go to her and just kind of get my mind right or um, see if she saw something that I didn't feel or didn't see um, to kind of bounce ideas off of, um, as well as probably Sasha Palacios on Team Mexico. She was my catcher. And when it came to pitching, I mean, you can only feel yourself and see yourself in so many different ways. And as your catcher, she's she's your battery. She's your other, your other half. And um, when we were on, we were on and she got me and she saw the way that my body worked. And uh, whenever I felt like out of, out of whack or whatever it may have been, and she was always there to kind of tell me what she saw. And it definitely helped me no matter what. So, yeah. What was it like, obviously getting to play some of your idols, like Kat Osterman that you said you looked up to on Team USA? To play them? Mm -hmm. um, well, she made me look ridiculous, that's for sure. <laughs> um, being a hitting pitcher, I got the privilege to hit off of some, some really good pitchers that I admired uh, while I was playing in college and when I was um, playing post-college overseas. I know that there's a lot of pitchers that got to play overseas just for either a few weekends or whatever it was in Italy. And I got to face them. And um, sometimes it's fun because you're like, yeah, I still got it. I'm a pretty good hitter. And, and then sometimes I'm like, well, you got to tip your hat when you're a fellow pitcher and you're like, well, that was a really good pitch. So um, it definitely, it, a mixed emotion for sure. Of course, what was it like during your retirement going into college coaching? Um, it was kind of hard actually. Um, seeing everyone enjoy the game and especially when I have friends that are still playing, even to this day, um, to see them being, be successful and still love the game and still continue to train. Um, I commend them for it because man, my body cannot do it anymore, but, um, I miss it. I miss the competition. I miss the camaraderie. I miss, um, just seeing my friends every day. And so when I was coaching or when I first got into coaching initially, even when I was at, at Louisville, um, sometimes I get a little emotional when I see the girls get super excited or do something really well, or, um, beat a big team. It, it really gets you in the fields and it makes you miss the sport and miss being on that field. What advice would you give those college softball players looking to play professionally? To, continue to work um even though you've made it to the d1 program and made it to either a high level or mid-major um it's not done it's not over and you don't have to hang them up even if you don't go into the mpf or um go that direction you can there's always other outlets for you to play and other professional um places for you to to see and and to do and, and accomplish and i think as far as right now, I tell my girls this too. I was like, if you're not done playing, don't be done. Um, be done when you want to be done. It's not done just because you're done with your four years of college. If you want to continue playing, continue playing as, as long as you can. 
What advice would you give those professional softball players that are looking to transition from being professional softball players to going into the real world, whether it's the corporate world or into college coaching like you did? Connections, make connections, um, communicate with other people, make friends, whether it be just, uh, hey, here, here's so-and-so or here's my, my information. I think learning how to sell yourself is a, is a huge aspect. And um, I think whether you're going into the corporate re- world or going into coaching, um, it's all about who you know, right? Not, not what you know, who you know. So um, make connections and get your name out there. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media? Um, on all my handles from Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, everything is Chi-Town 77 Thank you again, Cheyenne Tarango, for your interview, and best of luck in your future in the, in the college coaching after professional softball. Thank you. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Cheyenne Tarango, for your interview, and best of luck in your future. Thank you. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.